Hey, so this is the start of, or returning to our geometry and trigonometry unit, but this time building on our understanding of matrices from before. And it starts with a pretty simple idea that if we have a point, we do express as an ordered pair, x comma y, we can express that as a two by one vector or matrix, or we call a position vector, x up top, y below. And if we have multiple points, let's say vertices of some shape, we can express that in it all together in a single matrix. Again, x in the top first row, y in the second row. And eventually we can apply these ideas beyond two dimensions. And so let's, get, let's stick with two dimensions and let's look at this. I got a triangle with these three vertices. And so let's just right now express this as a matrix. And so the coordinates of A are five, negative one. So five over negative one, negative three over negative two for B and one over four for C. And so this two by three matrix represents the coordinates of A, B, and C. Now, since I have a matrix, I can multiply it by another matrix and that will, that will change the values of these. And if we think in terms of geometry, that'll change the positions of these points. So it'll transform the shape. So we call this matrix of highlight in blue a transformation matrix. And so if I multiply this first, which if I try to multiply it by the other way around, uh, it won't be possible. The number of columns of the first matrix won't match the number of rows of the second. I can perform some quick matrix multiplication. Again, we call this usually capital T, our transformation matrix. And whether you use your GDC or not, it should be fairly quick to figure out the new elements of when I multiply these. So for example, two times five plus negative one times negative one is 11. And do one more, negative two times five plus three times negative one is negative 13. And whether you use your GDC or not, we should rather quickly get to these points or these elements, which represent the new image points of A, B, and C. So 11, negative 13 represents the coordinates of where A has been mapped onto. Image points of B, image point of C after this transformation. And so I could write these out as ordered pairs. So the image of A is now at 11, comma, negative 13, and so on. All right, now in later lessons, we'll look at the real, look more in depth into the effects of how these values change the shape. But right now, it's just the mechanics of it. Okay, I got a line segment AB as well. It's been transformed in some manner. And so let me first write A as a matrix. And so point A is at negative 2, 4. Point B is at 2, negative 1. So I can write those two points together like this. That said, I've seen where this matrix ends up. And I'll call this uh, the image of A. And so I can see point A now ends up after this transformation at negative two comma negative eight. And B, wrong B, ends up after this transformation at two comma five. And so in essence, I don't know the transformation matrix, but I know if I want the transformation matrix, transformation matrix times A, that gives me the transform matrix. So we have enough information to figure out T. Doing a little bit of matrix multiplication, uh, I want to isolate the matrix T. And so remember, we can't divide both sides by A, but we can multiply both sides. Just give myself a bit of space here. I'll do it in two steps. Let's not be too lazy here. So I can multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of A. Now I gotta be a little bit careful here, because again, that A with the apostrophe is not the inverse, that is the image, you know, that's this matrix right here. And so keep in mind, this becomes the identity matrix. I can, so in the end, I just have matrix T and the other side, and you just need to go the matrix of the new vertices times the inverse of A, which our calculator can tell us quite quickly. And so for this, we can just use our GDC. In fact, we can do all this on our GDC. Once we type in, all I really need to type in is this times the inverse of A. So you probably type in both your matrices, but when you actually multiply it, you'd go this matrix times the inverse of this. 
which we've learned about in previous lessons, and should be really quite quick, and you should get this matrix. You should get 1 over 2, 0, negative 1. And again, that's the matrix that led us to go from here to here. And clearly we could check. You could just now take this matrix here, multiply by A, and you should get that. Okay, let's start, just start to look at the ideas now of the transformation matrix and how those values actually affect the graph, which again will become a much bigger topic in the lessons going forwards. So I have again a triangle, ABC, uh, and you can see the vertices there. I want to multiply it by the transformation matrix this. It's a diagonal matrix of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on the diagonal. All right, I want to use matrix multiplication to determine and then draw what the image looks like. And so I got my transformation matrix. I'll copy that out. And then I'll multiply that by the matrix of my vertices. And I'll just go in order for A, B, and C. So for example, A I can see is at negative 4, negative 2. So my matrix will begin with negative 4 over negative 2. And so on for B and for C. All right, again, you can use a GDC, you can do it by hand. Either way, it should be fairly quick. And we get these points. We get negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 3, 2, and 2. So let me draw those and then start to figure out and try to look for a connection between the new image and our transformation matrix. So I'll draw this in, oh, let's pick green. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 3, and 2, 2. And so if I draw this, I'm hoping you're realizing that what I have is actually a copy. It's similar to the original triangle. It's just been shrunk. Um, and other than that, though, it is, you know, it's ex the exact same shape, but it's been shrunk by a factor of a half. All my lengths, widths, and heights are all one half the length. And we can also see that from the coordinates. All my coordinates have been chopped in half, which is related to our matrix here. A fairly simple matrix, but it's a good place to start. And so for the last part, I want us to make a prediction. Okay, what if the transformation matrix was this? A diagonal matrix with two on the diagonal. What do you think that would look like? And then check. So my prediction is, okay, when these are halves, all these values from here to here were multiplied by a half. So if we have twos, my prediction is all these words will double. So my prediction for my new matrix would be exactly what I started with, but double everything. So negative 8, negative 4, 0, 12, 8, and 8. And now to check, you could just use a GDC, but I would just take this new matrix multiplied by this original matrix here. And what do you know, I'm, I'm not wrong. We would end up with this, which to give you a sense of what it would look like, for example, uh, I can't fit all these points on here, but negative eight comma negative four would be roughly around here. Zero comma 12 would be up in this next question over here somewhere. And eight comma eight would be just up here. And we'd have a triangle congruent to what we had before, but now, sorry, not congruent, similar to what we had four, but now all my sides are twice as long. And so this is starting to give us a sense about how the actual values in a transformation matrix affect the shape of the graph, which is definitely something we want to look into more. But for right now, like I said, we just want to understand the basics of this introduction.